I'm John McEntee from Incantation, and you're watching Loud TV. Urgh. Yeah, welcome, John. Well, from the well, thank you, can... you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah, you're calling from the States? Yes. Yeah, yeah. you're uh, in Pennsylvania? Uh, actually, I'm in Columbus, Ohio. We're jamming, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we're jamming with the band um, this weekend, so I'm doing it from here. But uh, actually, I moved to North Carolina recently, so uh, Pennsylvania is my old hometown. Now, my new hometown is in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. So I did, you are. I don't know where it's a little warmer. <laughs> so you are a real band, and you are still rehearsing. Wow! <laughs> I know it's crazy, right? It's not just a um, a band that um, you know trades files over the internet and that's it. You know, no, we actually jam as a band. I mean, that's you know. One of the most fun parts of being in the band is having that connection with um, everybody, you know, and actually working on material as a team, you know. You know, four guys, we like hanging out, we have a good time hanging out, and we play some metal together, and, um, you know, we write stuff because we have fun doing it. It's not so, not so business-like, you know. We don't, we don't try, we don't want to make it, we want to make it fun for everybody. So, how was this last rehearsal? Well, so far it was great. I mean, um, we've been working on a lot of new material since, um, the, you know, we finished with the last album. So we got to demo or put down some uh, basic tracks for three brand new songs as a demo. So, yeah, it's, it's going good. Plus, we've been working on some other new material. So it's very productive. Totally awesome. Nothing can stop you. Well, it's, you know, when you do what you love, it's so easy to, um, you know, want to continue doing it. I mean, it's true, the band's a lot of work, you know, to do, but it's just something we love doing, so it's so, you know, it's super easy, you know? So this is your 12th album? Yeah, something like that. I, I stopped counting at, like, I don't know, probably five I stopped counting. <laughs> to, to us, it's just, you know... It, It's just our next album, you know, so it's cool. I mean, every album is super important to us, you know, but uh, what's really awesome about the Sect of Divinities album is just that it's been, like, taken off like wildfire as far as, like, the response. I mean, um, you know, all our albums get pretty good response. You know, we have, a, we have a good, steady fan base, but this one seems to really, like, somehow transcended into... Um, you know, a higher level than the other ones, which, you know, for us, you know, we just do what we do, so it's, you know, I guess we're just like, okay, cool, whatever, but it's really great, um, you know, every time you do something and people appreciate it, you're just like, hell yeah, that's awesome, you know? It's super natural, but could you believe it 30 years ago? No, <laughs> no I know what you're going to say, no, I couldn't believe, 30 years ago, I thought, You know, when we started the band, it was like, lucky if we get five years out of it, and maybe, you know, we were happy to put out a, um, a demo, or maybe get a seven inch deal, you know, we would have thought the pinnacle of our career was to put out like one album, and then, you know, everybody would hate it or something, and then we would just, you know, be nowhere, but, you know, basically the game plan we started with just, you know, went drastically wrong, and 30 years later, you know, we're still playing metal and we're still um i mean we're doing better now than we ever have as a band it's just insane i mean who would have thought that you know i mean I, we, we've had i've had a great career though with the band I mean, we had a lot of great stuff i mean we have some real classic albums throughout our history you know at least in the death metal world are considered kind of important classics so i mean i'm you know totally honored and humbled by that but For us to put out a new album and have it be such a great response is just is just amazing. You know, 30 years into our career, I mean, um, you know, I would have thought by this time, you know, 
the, the music trends would have changed so much that what we're doing was not relevant to what's going on, you know, but I guess, I guess it still is, you know, certain bands somehow, you know, or certain styles just, you know, last long, you know, I mean, when I was born, you know, I was born in uh, 1969. So, I mean, you know, 30 years before that, I mean, you're talking about like the 30s, the 30s music, you know, <laughs> so I just wouldn't have thought that, you know, death metal would have still been re relevant 30 years, you know, after, you know, after we started. God bless incantation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for us, this might be more like goat bless, you know. <laughs> The goats, the goats on our side, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, goats bless incantation. <laughs> yeah. So, four members uh, that write music. Yes. Uh, in the band, uh, could we say that you are maybe the the maestro into the band? Uh, I mean, I guess you could say that. I mean, the overall concept is def was definitely my idea from kind of day one of the band. But everybody has a, an input and in, in is important with it. I mean, um, you know, a, a band is all four members in the in the band. Everyone's input is really important. And, of course, the, you know, the more that everybody contributes, the better. But, I mean, yeah, maybe I steer, steer the ship, you know. But, um, you know, I couldn't come up with a great album. I mean, I, I could probably come up with some good stuff, but the album is better because, um, you know, we have, everybody is involved in it. Everyone takes it really, it puts a lot of care into it. So it, it's really great. You know, without everybody else, we'd be screwed. You know, uh, what about this drier sound of this new album? It's really old school. Yeah. By, uh, and of course you may be tired of this trigger sound. Uh, especially on drums, or uh, which is uh, quite obvious today in the metal industry, and uh, of course you collaborated again with the uh, yeah the maestro, the master, yeah, Dan Swen again. Great, great guy. Okay. He's a great. He's a great um, producer and a great guy. <clears throat> I mean, as far as um, you know, I mean, I always prefer kind of the drier sound anyway. Uh, on albums i just think um you know for what we do it's just really good to have that drier thick guitar sound more than something that might be too um crunchy or, or whatnot i mean it's i like it nice and dirty too but it's just nice to have a nice thick sound to it as you know but uh, yeah i mean for us this album is a very organic album because We play, you know, we jammed the songs out when we when we put the basic drum tracks down. We just went through, had, you know, the, um, you know, we basically had the disc rolling or whatever, and we just were playing, you know, the songs kind of together with Kyle and getting the vibe of the song. And then once we got the good vibe of the song, we would use that take as our master take of the song. We didn't. It wasn't like you know. A lot of bands do a lot of like um, tempo mapping and stuff like that, and then try to uh, click out the songs and play the drums just to the click. But you know, we we tried doing that a little bit on the previous album on Profane Nexus, and it, we just didn't like the stiffness of it. We 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 realized we're just better more as you know real feel band, and, and you know who cares if the tempos are off here and there? That's a vanity thing, you know. It's like just if the songs are good and they sound good. You know, who, who cares? <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, you're listening to a song because you want to, you know, you want to get the feeling of the song and the vibe and the band. It, who, you know, who really gives a crap if, you know, this time we play the tempo, it's a couple of, you know, um, you know, couple of, um, you know, whatever, uh, TPI slower or faster, you know, who gives a crap? I mean, you listen to a song, you like the song, you know, if you don't, if you don't like the song, you don't like the song. And if you, if you get bummed out that, you know, maybe when we go back into that riff, it's a tad bit quicker or slower, you know, if you don't like it because of that, then okay, you don't like the song, whatever. But for us to like write the song and then be forced into these boxes, be just because more modern bands do it, it's just not us, you know, it, it works great for like, a, you know, those tech death bands or, you know, even like power metal bands it could work with. But for us, it's like we need that, um, you know, 
gross, slimy practice, sweaty vibe to the songs. We don't want it to be like, you know, super nice. I mean, I, I don't think our fans want it to be uh, super nice either. You know, I mean, they, they, they listen to death metal because they want it to be rough edged. You know, if they want to listen to something that is cleaner and nicer, there's other styles of music for that. You know? Yeah. There are a lot of bands. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, yeah. yeah. You know, you know. But, you know, for us, you know, we just have to be ourselves, you know? I mean, we, on this album, we just wanted to be ourselves, you know? I mean, we'll, we do that on every album, but this album more because we didn't kind of cave in to, um, you know, any of, the, you know, really the so much of the newer technologies. I mean, yeah, we do stuff, you know, it's 2020. It's not 1990, so the recording process is different. But, you, you know, as far as playing the songs and having a real feel, you know, we just did it our way. Screw you know, and if, you know, like we have with any of our albums, we just do it. And if you don't like it, screw it. Oh, well, you know, we're happy with it. So that's what's important. You know, you, you can't just please everybody or whatever, you know, please the trends. In the end, the most important is uh, your freedom of speech and your freedom of uh, writing what you want. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's absolutely the most important thing. I mean, just to, you know, do things our way and, um, you know, I mean, that's why we, what's why I got into metal or, you know, I'm such a metal fan is because it was like rebellious, you know, tell the world to piss off and we just want to play metal and we don't care about all your bullshit or whatever, you know, I mean, that's just, um, you know, that's essence of the band. I mean, we have, you know, we started off with a really, uh, like a punk rock attitude where it's just like, you know, piss off, we're going to do it our way. Even back when we started, we were, uh, we kind of consider ourselves like the bastard child of death metal because... We didn't want to play death metal just the same way as all the other bands. I mean, there were a lot of great bands then, you know, but we didn't want to follow that template. We wanted to follow our own rough edge template, you know, our own just really, uh, even back then we considered like really back to the roots kind of sound where, you know, it's almost like that old punk rock or, you know, hard rock vibe, but in a death metal way, you know? Yeah. And you, you were talking about uh, temples. And um, uh, it was uh, maybe a mode, or maybe it was cool, you know, to play fast. Yes. In the nineties, you know, yeah. when I uh, was interviewed, bands like Marduk, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, they they could play fast. And yeah. now maybe with your style, it's you know, the album is full of uh, mid tempos, very doom atmosphere, and maybe this is the the goat way. The goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the goat way. The goat, the, goat, the goat is not always running, you know? But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it, I mean, yeah, there was definitely a... We, I concentrated a lot as far as, like, my contribution to the, the songs. I really concentrated on a lot of the mid-tempos myself because I just wanted to... Um, I just felt like maybe the last album didn't really... Um, express the mid tempos as well as i would uh, prefer like each album's kind of an answer to the last one in a certain way so basically it was just um you know we wanted to ha have it really um and at least for myself want to have really good quality uh mid tempos but they're still fast and there's still uh, a lot of slow on the album too it just um you know it just kind of don't want to do the um you know, same album choice, but we have, you know, what, 12, I guess it's 12 albums, 11 albums, I don't know how many, but, you know, you don't want, you don't want to repeat anything you did necessarily, but you also don't want to, like, push too far away from it, so, you know, it's actually, like, the, the further into our career we get, it's almost harder in a way to come up with an album, because, you you know, you, yeah, you don't, want, you, you don't want to just be like, okay, it's the same old thing, but at the same time, you don't want it to be like, totally different and change it because i mean we love what we do what about the the lyrics um it seems that it's not a concept album no nope. but all the um, all the all the lyrics are uh yeah linked in a way by the title Sex well, of the, 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 yeah, the, to be fair about it um uh, Chuck Sherwood, our bass player, comes up with all the lyrics and the you know, album title he came up with. And, I mean, he's really uh, a mastermind on uh, uh, coming up with lyrics. I mean, he really, like, 
he just really digs in the weeds. He really is interested in history and you know history of mythology and different um, you know religion religious practices and stuff like that. He just it's just his um, pocket. Plus, he's really into uh, like horror kind of stuff too. So it all really um, just makes for a, a good well of ideas to come up with lyrically. And plus, he's really good at coming up with um, you know just just um, you know the way he comes up with phrases and you know use a lot of five dollar words in the song that makes sense you know so it's really cool he, he's been, he's we've been really fortunate I mean we already have all the lyrics done for the next album plus probably another album after that full of lyrics and they're all like you know inter really interesting uh, ideas and stuff so we're extremely ex excited to um, you know work on the new album even with uh, lyrics and we're just really fortunate as a band to have kind of like our own death metal version of like a Neil Peart lyricist you know yeah so it's not your thing writing uh, no, I mean I used to I used to write lyrics for the band but my lyrics were not close to as good as his and for me it was a little more I had to I did it because I had to do it not because I really love doing it. I love writing music but I, I don't really uh, love writing lyrics. I mean, I got really burnt out on saying how much I hate religion and how much I hate, um, you know, stuff like that, you know, just, so it was just, it just got like, kind of like, okay, you know, everyone kind of knows that we're not really a religious band or, you know, and, you know, it was like, we needed to go in another interesting area to make the, make the uh, concept as interesting as the music is, you know? Yeah, um, you, got, you know, I'm sorry, but in, in a band in general, you need to know and you need to be real about your where you excuse. are not as good at. You know, you need, like everybody, like there's four people in the band, so it's, everybody has to be there to fill in the gaps for whatever somebody might not be good at. You know, so it, it really works good because each person in the band brings something to the table that somebody else in the band, you know, lacks, you know, so it's just a, you know, it's important to, you can't just be like, okay, everything I do is going to be great, and the way I'm going to do it's going to be great, I mean, yeah, there are some people like that, and there's some people that might be that great, but, you know, we're humans, you know, we all have our places where we're good at, and places that we aren't good at, and if it's, the, if it's in the band, or it's the people you're working with, you know, in the music industry, you need people that you trust that you, okay, well, they're going to come up with good ideas or they're going to be, give you the right opinion on what to do, you know? Was it the there same? for a reason. Yeah. What, what is, was it the same with the, with the artwork? With, um, Eleren? Yeah, El Eleren Cantor, he, um, yeah, I mean, Chuck worked with him on the artwork and, um, it was, Chuck, Chuck, had some really specific ideas on how, how he wanted the artwork done, but we were we were having a little bit of a problem because Eleanor Cantor, I think he felt kind of restricted a little bit because the ideas were so defined. So um, we had to, you know, talk it over as a band and you know come up with the conclusion that we do have to give Elon Cantor the, you know, freedom to do his, his work because he's a great artist. He knows how to do this. And once we gave him the freedom to, you know, incorporate, you know, stuff into the album, but do it in his way, it all just fell together, you know, the way it's supposed to. And once we seen the artwork, when he was finished with it, we're like, this is perfect. And it fits the, it's crazy because it fits the concept. It fits even the vibe of the music. Somehow when I, listen to the music i picture the artwork now you know it's great to have it connected as one thing you know yeah that's talent on eleanor cantor's part yeah is it a painting uh yeah yeah it's a painting he's you know we we wanted that we wanted to have something that was a real True. piece of art and not just yeah because a lot there's a lot of computer art or just you know everybody does too much it's it's too much computer based and not enough um hands on you know but we've always tried to use it as much as possible to use real artwork the only times we didn't is when we couldn't for some reason either you know budgeting or you know artists not being available or something but every time we can we like to use real artwork you know yeah 
what I consider real artwork is when you take a paintbrush and you use it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the lack of tour, the lack of concerts? Uh, would you would you tour maybe hopefully next year? Or I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, what well, I mean, definitely it's a bummer to not tour. I mean, we're so used to touring. In a way, it was ni it's nice to be forced on a break because we probably wouldn't have taken a break. So, you know, in a way, it's good to recharge the batteries and not be on tour for, you know, basically it's, it's because it's going to be at least a whole year, which is one of the longest we haven't played any shows in, in a long time, in over 10 years, I think. We've always at least played, you know, a small tour or something throughout the year. So it's going to be the first time. But, um, you know, it's it's fine. It's fine for us. We've been keeping busy writing music, so it, it's okay, you know, for us. But you know, when you have a new album out, of course you want to tour for it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, everybody's in the same boat. So it's not like... Uh, Ever, anybody has one up on anybody and it was we didn't want to be we didn't want to wait to do the album either you know we didn't want to wait we, we finished the album in january we wanted to get it out this year because i mean if we would have put it out next year it would have been going on a year and a half two years old since we did it it would to us it wouldn't have been quite as special and plus like just get it out there it's music you know it's not it's, you know even if we can't tour for another year on it it's fine you know and you know we'll, Like I said, we're just working on new material now. It's like now, it's like once the album's out, it's almost like you, you have the um, freedom. Okay, we can really work on the new stuff and not, you know, um, not feel like we're, we're overdoing it, you know, because sometimes we just have an like, overabundance of songs, you know. Now, we're, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's all good. <laughs> so you're full of new ideas. It's great. We just keep, we just, we're just, the uh, thing is, we're super inspired as a band, you know? So it's like, if we're not going to be touring, we're going to be writing music, you know? It's just natural. It's, it's not like we we're thinking about it. It's not some game plan where we're like, okay, we, we got to top the next album or we have to do another, um, you know, album because it's time to do it. It's no, it's just we have fun writing music together as a band. So we're going to write music, you know? The more of the problem is is to know when to stop writing music so we can just concentrate on getting the album done. That's actually a harder thing to do than, you know, anything because, you know, you get an idea and you want to just start working on it and you're like, oh, shit, wait, we have, the, like, ten other songs that we really should try to, um, you know, record and get done before we move on. So the way we're looking at it now, we're just trying to get as many songs recorded as possible so we can get captured a vibe while everything is still very, um, you know, fluent and just the, the inspirations there and stuff like that. And then, you know, we're just going to keep writing, you know, we, like, I think we're up to 12, 12 new songs at the moment. Plus we have a couple of stragglers that we've had around for a while, but really as far as new songs, we have about 12 now and, um, super happy with the way they're coming out. So, um, uh, You are quite compared uh, sometimes to to this band that I like to uh, Immolation from mm -hmm. uh, from the USA uh, and uh, are you still in touch with uh, with bands like this and uh, yeah. through the 30 years history? Um, would you change something in your history? Well, first of all, as far as Immolation goes, I mean. I mean, I've been friends with Immolation since we first. I we knew. I knew about his the uh, Bob and Ross's former band had a band called Rigor Mortis, and I I didn't know Rigor Mortis. I didn't know those guys from Rigor Mortis. I knew Zach from Rigor Mortis, which was their. Um, no, it wasn't Ross. It was Tom and um, Bob were in Rigor Mortis. Zach was a bass player, and I knew him. And I met those guys kind of through Rigor Mortis. When Rigor Mortis stopped, they started Immolation. And, uh, I mean, I've been friends with them for years, and every time we get together, it's always a blast. It's like, when we get hang out, it's like we're, you know, 18, 19 years old, 20 years old again, you know? So it's it's, it's a total blast um, seeing those guys. And plus, our, our former guitar player, Alex, plays with them, and I still keep a good contact with him. So 
it's really awesome to um, you know s still be friends with those guys. And you know, they're such a great band and doing so well. It's kind of it, every time you know somebody from our old crew does well, it's it's always um, you know something for all of us to be proud of. You know, I mean, you know, even other bands like Mortician from back in the day, you know, we still. Uh, you know, keep in touch with here and there. Yeah, of course, it's not as much when we used to live all close together and stuff like that. But um, you know, we still enjoy uh, hanging out. You know, all you know, all all of us in the old school um, New York, New Jersey death metal scene. We all um, you know still have a great time hanging out and stuff. As far as um, you know, would I change things or regrets? You know, yeah. I mean, you could always say that there's things. That, I mean. There's things I've done that I'm not proud of, and there's, there's, you know, yeah, you do a lot of stupid things, you know, especially as a young mu mu musician. I mean, we're just like, you know, you're doing everything for the first time, you know, you're, you know, you, it's easy to be real immature and stubborn about stuff, you know, and, you know, you make a lot of mistakes early on, but I wouldn't necessarily change them because I'm, I'm really happy where I'm at now with the band i'm really happy where the band is the people i'm jamming with and it wouldn't have happened if i changed anything but I, I you know um of course um i mean if you don't look back on your life and you know realize you made some mistakes it's like how the hell are you going to be good or learn from it or anything i mean you know yeah i mean i know there's i know people that are arrogant enough to think like you know they're always right on everything you know but i, I know that the truth of the matter is i made lots of mistakes and um, I did a lot of stupid things and underestimated myself, underestimate other people or whatever. And, you know, I just try to, you know, learn from these mistakes and better myself. You know, more, the more mistakes you make, the, um, you know, more you learn. You know, you, I, I've learned the hard way, the real hard way on a lot of things, you know. So, you know, but it's, it's fine. I mean, that's part of, um, part of growing as a person, you know. And, um, yeah. It's it's nothing to be ashamed of making making mistakes or whatever you know. Thank you, John, again for your precious time uh, and th listen listen to this new album, Sects of Vile Divinities. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hell yeah! Take see care. you. Mercy. See you maybe next year in France, right? Yes, yeah, for sure. Definitely, we definitely are going to come to France again. We just don't know when. And we look forward to because we always have a blast in France. I mean, some some of our craziest European shows have been in France. I mean, um, yeah, just uh, you know, yeah, you guys are great. You French fucks are crazy. 